Hey, thanks for coming out to see us tonight. I think this band is cracker. trying to flatter the country, but I mean it really is. There's a different kind of engagement <coughs> and passion for rock music here um, that I see in a lot of other places. So I mean we're popular in the United States. We have plenty of <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Hold on. So we're we're popular in a lot of cities and in the United States and things like that. Um, but you know, a lot of places we play, people are sitting down, you know, and, uh, and you know, there's places where people are really enthusiastic, but for some reason in, in Spain, people are really enthusiastic about us. But the other important thing is it's different songs are popular here than in the United States. And I think there are more interesting songs and the better songs. So to us, we you know we come over here and we play, and it's like oh we get a lot of good songs, right? It's cool. Because I think uh, California, you know, we, you know, I was born in Texas, I lived all over the place, but, you know, basically came of age in California, uh, that's where our band started, and California, I think, is known for sort of being more of an urban state, with more urban and sophisticated music, but it also has this really long tradition of country music and blues and, and roots rock, you know? And uh, so the idea was to do sort of two parts of California, like coastal, urban California, and rural California. But also, too, very subtly in there, there's a, um, it's also political um, in that, I mean, it's, you know, it's like, to me, it's like a documentary, the album is. And so you have sort of left radical voices on the Berkeley disc, and you have a more, maybe not radical, but you have a more conservative voice on the Bakersfield disc. And, you know, some of it, they're just, it's, it's kind of purposeful. So. Did, they originally weren't. Um, they weren't originally going to be this two-album set. It was just uh, I was working on songs in Athens, Georgia, um, and sort of playing with these guys who were the backing band. Tonight. And then we went to Berkeley, California, to meet up with the original. Well, not the original, but the Kerosene Hat um, lineup of the band. David Ferriger and Michael Urbano, and just went in the studio for three days to see if we could just kind of make up some songs. Uh, you know, like songwriting, like demos, just raw material, just very basic start of the songs, right? And uh, it was really interesting. Uh, it was very different than the other stuff, um, but it was good. And so I played, I played this for my wife. My wife's also a band manager and a concert promoter and stuff like that. And I played the two batches of songs for them. And she's like, oh, these are two different discs. 
it's like two different discs, one album, right? And so it quickly developed this, it wasn't intentional, it wasn't the plan, but it developed like this, uh, what we would say is a high concept, you know, like an overarching theme that, you know, you will have, will purposely have these two discs with kind of two different bands recorded in two different places with two different perspectives. And that's what we did. There ain't no palm trees where I come from And no big waves crashing on the shore No grid like traffic and no movie stars now In the park Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a. Uh, I think in in a way, like if you listen to our first album, there those elements are on our first album. There's things that are more like kind of, you know, rock, like sort of more the the coastal California alternative rock, punk rock influenced. And then there's songs like Mr. Wrong on that album that are very Bakersfield influenced, right? So. In a way, this is our most, um, I, I don't know, in a way this is sort of a, the final, not final, but it, this is like a summary of what we've done for years, but we just broke it into two discs instead of mixing it together in one album. And we made it more extreme, you know, we took it to more extreme. <laughs> The devil will send demons fly around your wedding day. Don't send no invitation. You know I don't have much to say. Cause I heard about well, ten. Well, I mean, you have to look at what, what I'm doing is I also have Camp of Van Beethoven. So in 2009, there was a Cracker record, Sunrise. And then in 2011, there, I did a solo record. And then in 2013, I did a Camp of Van Beethoven record. And then in 2014, I did a Camp of Van Beethoven record. And then we did the other double disc Cracker record. So yeah, so there's five years between the two Cracker records, but there's two discs, um, and but but yeah, I, I don't like to make an album unless we have a lot of songs. Like if we have 30 songs, then it's time to start an album. And if if 12 make it onto it, if we have 30 good ideas, maybe not finished songs, with 30 good ideas, then it's time to make an album. But. That's the way we do it, you know? <laughs> Focusing about artist rights and such like that, and um, but because he's not paying attention, um, it's actually we're a actually able to get some things through Congress. There's three bills now in the United States. Artists are not paid for radio play. I don't know if you know that. When songs are played on the radio, artists aren't paid. So there's a bill, both Republican and Democrats, that support this law. There's also songwriters get much less than the performer um, for digital streaming. 
and there's a bill to correct that. And then um, our copyright office, which eventually affects artists, is very weak. And they just passed a bill that will make the copyright office strong and independent, which in theory should help artists. It's one step removed. But those three things happened since Trump got elected. But it's partly because I don't think that's anything that he focuses on. And uh, these have, well, we could say bipartisan. It's not a left or right issue. Um, and it's, it's moving now. It's, it's, I would have never thought it, but it's, uh, there's some strange uh, ability to get things done right now on, on artist rights. So the next lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, but it's the work that we did for the last five years with the blog. Um, a lot of the proposals um, are, come directly out of um, Tricordist, a group called Sona, Songwriters of North America. Like all of these proposals come, um, I Respect Music, all of these groups started about the same time as the Tricordist, and we each have a bill that is, I think they're just going to pass. So, uh, but it's still, it's still a long fight, and the president has to sign the bill, but I think it's something that like, it's just he doesn't care about it. He doesn't care about it. If somebody just tells him to sign the bill, he'll sign the bill, right? Yeah, I think that he, he thinks about in greatest things. And yeah, this is just going to slide right by. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's busy tweeting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right? Absolutely. At 3 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So much tweets. Uh, and... mm -hmm. Because uh, the, that song was on an EP before that album came out, and um, the record company said, "No, you've already released that. You can't put it on the album." And so Don, our producer, said, "Let's just not list it." And you know how it, it he puts all those small tracks that are silent, like it goes you know, track 14, 15, 16, 17, and then it gets to 69, and then it plays that song, right? Um, it was just really simply because the record company said, don't put it on the record because you already released it. And so we hit it on there. And we hit another song on there as well, too. And two others. Uh, just because once you start doing that, um, why not? Why add just one? Add three, <laughs> right? And, and we, were, all, oh, we were vindicated because there, soon there was a pressing of the CD that said, includes the hit, You're a Trash Girl, the sticker. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, uh, there's also, we tried, you can do this, you can put a song at the top of the CD in front of the number one, in front of track number one, so if you play track one and then hit reverse, there's a space for a song there. So we were going to put a song there, but we thought nobody would like to find this. <laughs> and you have to go, like, rewinding tape, you know, it goes, Backwards, right? Hey, 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 Sweet as a pie. Sweet as a pie. I think Barcelona has good architecture and, uh, and the ocean. This is really good. Like Barcelona has interesting food, has interesting art. Um, the western part of the country, like Galicia, the Basque country, Cantabria, 
has the beautiful mountains and it's green and it's like you could be in Scotland or Ireland or something like that. That's very, very different. Madrid is like New York, but he hates Madrid. Our tour manager <laughs> hates Madrid. But to us, it's like, it's like an easier, nicer New York. With much so, better food. With, with better food. People. Sometimes you get a few ideas from there. Uh, Berkeley to Bakersfield is really uh, different. Like a lot of those songs I just wrote by myself with my Spanish guitar. You know, just finger picked, very quiet, just simple. And then a lot of those songs were with a band in the studio, just making up riffs and playing things. There's no real one way. You just need time and time to just concentrate on that. So. I teach at the university. I have for a long time, but uh, uh, it's interesting. I teach a music business. I teach like the business of music at the University of Georgia. So uh, it's a strange thing, but I enjoy it. It's the same. It's the same thing. It's just a performance. You just get up in front of the class, and if they, you know, you could tell it's like, oh shit. They don't like this, you know, it's like you have to engage them and you have to tell them something new and you have to, I don't know, it's really similar. It's interesting. And plus the music business is interesting to talk about. Like I, and I like to do cool stuff. Like I like, I, I spend a lot of time talking about how organized, for the economic part, how organized crime was always a big part of the music business, how they took a, uh, you know, like black, black market money and then made it white market legitimate money. This has always been a part of the music business going back 200 years, right? So I teach, there's a bunch of really interesting things to teach in the music business. They're gonna strike you down at midnight And they'll carry me Yeah, and, and, and the thing, mostly what I tell them, though, is that you have to play the music. Like, you, here, here's, here's how the business works. Here are all the pieces of the business. But the number one thing is, if you have to play music that you like, because you're going to be playing these songs, like, even one year of playing songs that you don't like is like hell. You know, maybe purgatory. <laughs> but hell or something. It's pretty bad, right? And then imagine playing music you don't like for 20 years, right? This is like... You can't do that. It's like working in a, in a factory. Yeah, yeah. That's so why you have 30 to, songs and then yeah. find the good ones. <laughs> well, and, and, and you, have to, you have to actually enjoy it because most, most musicians will not really be paid enough to make a living. Most musicians will have to have other jobs. Even who, even even musicians who put out records and 
are well regarded in the media. Right? So you have to watch. Very smelly. You don't want to get near it now. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! No time for laundry. That's the, the name of the tour.